strong. And as you can see, they are really effective. I'm gonna dry up now. <laughs> so here's one of the sprinklers and they are called wobblers. And this one is a mini wobbler with a medium sized no nozzle. There are different types of nozzles and this one is the medium one. So the sprinklers, as you can see, there is one here and then the next one is over here. It means that the distance from the sprinklers we chose around five to five and a half meters. So it's quite big compared to my normal sprinkler system. You need much less sprinklers because they cover a much bigger area. So that's great, you have less sprinklers in the garden. And here is one more. And then over there we have the next one. So they're really quite far apart and they cover the whole area. The height we chose pretty high. Some they are smaller, but um, they are about 1.55 as you can see there are not so many for this big area you can walk down here uh, number three and the flower shop and star fruit growing lots of pineapple watermelons as a new ground cover for the winter season and hopefully I will have a lot of watermelons this year. So the whole garden is now basically divided into two zones. It's the fruit orchard zone now here and the vegetable zone next to the house. Oh look, the pepper plant is growing up, the coconut tree. Canyon, which goes down here. I'm basically on a half island because all around the garden there is canyon. So it's quite wild. Lily is up there hanging out in the tree. <laughs> Lily! She's sleeping. Yeah, she's relaxed. One year almost, or half a year at least, the garden looks really under construction. And now I'm starting to build up again. And here we built a small room to have inside as a so-called control station for the irrigation. Let me show you. There is a net, because this time there are many snakes and it's not fun to have snakes in here. So here's the water tank and there's about 3,000 liters more or less and this water will be coming through this pipe through this filter and then it will be sucked in by this pump. It's a Crompton pump and it's a one horsepower. Um, yeah, it's worth to spend a little bit more money for a good pump. And the filter, it just roughly filters the water from the tank. So the water goes in here and it's sucked into the pump and then it travels up here and this one this one is just an air hole so it means there is just a rubber ball inside and it's here because if the pump is um, is turned off the rubber ball that falls down then when the rubber ball falls down some air comes in and this prevents the sprinklers to just run down the water even if it's not on because the tank is higher than a few sprinklers that are on the fields. 
So yeah, that's just a additional thing that we put here to make sure not to lose any water. And then the water goes here down to this pipe. And then it comes to a big filter. And there are some pressure pressure readers installed to see if something maybe is blocked. You can see it on the pressure. And also it was good to check how much pressure we have on the sprinklers to know more or less um, how many sprinklers we can put on the system to be the most effective. So the water comes here and all this is one inch. It's all one inch pipes. And then we have the different kinds of, the different solenoids. Uh, these are electric valves and they are open through the computer here. And when one opens, one part of the garden will be irrigated. And right now we are just using two because we have only two zones in the garden. The vegetable garden and the fruit orchard part of the garden. The other ones they are there because I have some installed many t water taps around in the garden to have water there. And just one detail, so the rain bird, it switches on the electric walls on and off, but the pump is, goes, the electricity goes through here and this is a a relay, which switch, switches on and off the pump. So what I also got here is a manual switch to whenever I want to give water with the horse pipe. So here I can just open this valve and then the water will flow through this pipe into the horse pipe and I can switch on here and show you. I'm going to show you the sprinklers, which is really fun, especially when it's hot. So I'm going to just open here and put it to 30 minutes. And on it goes. And yeah, they're really strong. And the good thing is, all of them give about, I think, the same amount of water, so it's really regular. And I get even wet here in between the two sprinklers, which are quite far apart, so they really cover a big area. And I got very wet, so it's really effective, very well effective. Awesome. So that's the last one, so let's count them how many are on one, um, one wall. There's one, two, number two. So we have 12 sprinklers and on one system and usually I let them run about maybe seven minutes each time. They are really effective as you can see. So as I told you before there are more walls than these two zones and this one is the outlet for one of the zones, that's a different zone that one day maybe I will use it to hang on some pipe there or to extend the irrigation or to make a separate thing for the nursery here. Same thing here. This one also is can be connected to the to the system. There is another outlet here which also can be connected 
it's not in use now, but maybe one day it will be practical to use. Okay, now zone number two. I will just switch it on manually, but you can also program it. So zone number two, there is one sprinkler. Two. So here are some clips about the work in progress. We digged the trenches throughout the whole garden, that was a lot of work. And we digged them pretty deep or as deep as we could eventually reach with our arms. About 60 cm deep were the trenches because I wanted to make sure that later on when I digged to make the garden beds I will not hit the pipe and I'm also going to plant trees. and. Yeah, just to make sure and all the pipes were one inch in size and yeah this is one of the main trenches that went all through the garden that we did first and then from there we digged the side trenches and if you're wondering how big the garden is so the vegetable garden is around 400 square meters and the fruit orchard is about the same so it's roughly 800 square meters. That's I think about 8,000 square foot or a little bit more than one-tenth of an acre. And these are the pipes. And at the end to make sure that it's really safe from getting any holes in there, after closing it we decided to lay some stones over it. These are just big stone slabs that we could get cut. So we laid all these slabs all the way on top of the pipes and we overlapped them. And yeah, this is what we did before closing the trenches. And then we started to close and that was actually more effort and needed more effort than I thought but finally we finished and yeah I hope this video gave you some valuable information in case you are just building an irrigation system yourself and I will leave in the description the exact name of the pump that I'm using and of the sprinklers that I'm using in the irrigation so see you next time in my garden